Hello and welcome back to our series on electrical and computer engineering. Tonight we introduce two configurations not of two elements but of three elements of the same kind. Three resistors or inductors, capacitors. Even three sources can be connected these ways. The two configurations are called triangles and stars and by two other names that we shall see soon. Are you curious enough? Let's begin. Neither in series nor in parallel. Most of the components in a circuit are neither in series nor in parallel. So it is not possible to apply the simplifications that we have learned previously. But there are two configurations of three elements of the same kind that occur often enough and that present interesting and important properties. They are the triangle configuration and the star configuration. I know, I know, they sound like the Big Bang Theory episodes, right? But they are not, I promise. The three resistors that I'm about to draw are part of a larger circuit that I'm not showing that connects to that group through the notes M, N, and P. Look at them. That configuration is what we call a triangle of resistors, or a delta, because if you draw that appropriately, it looks like the uppercase in Greek letter delta. Or some other engineers say, if I stretch the node P at the bottom like so, that configuration looks like the Greek letter pi, the lowercase pi in Greek. Well, call that triangle or delta or pi. When you have a configuration like that of three resistors, the resistors can have any values. They don't have to have the same values, the three of them. We have a triangle of resistors. Another configuration is that that we call a star or a Y or a T configurations. Three resistors or three inductors or capacitors or sources connected like this. In this configuration, we're not that interested in what is happening at the node in the center. But we do care about what is happening at the nodes M, N, and P. That is a Y because it looks uh, like the English letter Y, the Latin letter Y. But some people say, no, that looks like a star. A star, really? Well, sure, the star, see? That is a star, all right. But some others say, if I stretch the two resistors at the top, that looks like the letter T. So call that a star, call that a Y, or call that a T. That configuration is important. We are about to see that sometimes if we take a delta and convert that into a Y, we can all of a sudden apply the simplifications that we saw in the previous videos. How do we transform a delta into an equivalent Y? Easy. Multiply the adjacent and divide by the sum. But that looks kind of cryptic. What do I mean by that? Take this delta, right? A delta of three resistors X, Y, and Z in ohms between nodes M, N, and P. And I want to replace that by an equivalent Y like this connected to the same nodes M, N, and P, but with values A ohms, B ohms, and C ohms. We need to know how to compute A, B, and C in terms of X, Y, and Z. How do I do that? Multiply the adjacents, divide by the sum. What do I mean by that? Well, the resistor A, I can superimpose in my imagination to the triangle, like here, and say, well, multiply the adjacents. Who are the adjacent elements to A? Obviously, X and Z. Multiply them. X and Z, the adjacents to A, and divide them by the sum, like so. The value of the resistor A in ohms is X times Z divided by the sum of X plus Y plus Z. How about the value of resistor B? Same thing. Multiply the adjacents to B, divide by the sum. Who are the adjacents to B? In our imagination, again, we draw the resistor C superimposed on the triangle before we erase the triangle. 
and we say the adjacents to be our x and y multiply them and divide them by the sum. You see the value of b in ohms is x times y divided by x plus y plus z and of course the value of c is y times z divided by the sum. Let's repeat that. Multiply the adjacents divide by the sum. Oh, that was fun. Again, multiply the adjacents divide by the sum. Cool. By the way, you can use the same formulas for inductors connected in a triangle that you want to convert into a y a star of inductors. Same thing, it works with inductances. But if what you are converting is a triangle of capacitors into a y of capacitors, then you use the same formulas, but you use the inverses of the capacitance of x, y, and z to get the inverse of capacitance A, the inverse of the capacitance B, and the inverse of the capacitance C. Now, can you go back? Can you go from a y to a delta? Yes, we can, and it's useful, as I said before. Sometimes you have a configuration in the y, and if you only replace that by a configuration in the delta, all of a sudden you can simplify resistors in parallel that you could not before. How do we do that? Take that y of resistors A, B, and C known in ohms. And you want to find what is the equivalent triangle between the same three nodes M, N, and P with values to be computed. X ohms, Y ohms, and Z ohms. How do I compute them? Guess. The same verse multiply the adjacents, divide by the sum. You say, oh, that's not possible. What do you mean by that? In our imagination, we draw on the y, before we erase the y, the resistor x, for instance. Who are the adjacents to x? The two resistors that are on its sides, a and b, multiply a and b, divide by the sum. However, this time, look at them here, we use conductances, and we obtain conductances. So, multiply the conductance of a, times the conductance of B, divide by the sum of the three conductances, A, B, and C, and that gives you what? The conductance of X. That is a formula. Conductance of X is conductance of the two adjacents multiplied, divided by the sum of the three conductances in the original star, in the original Y, in the original T. Let's do that again. For the resistor Y, we're going to compute its conductance G, so Y, this one. Multiply the adjacent conductances C and B, like so, C and B, and divide by the sum of the three conductances A, B, and C, and that gives you the conductance of resistor Y, and the same is done for resistor Z. These formulas can also be used to convert a star of inductors into a triangle of inductors. But you have to use, of course, the inverses of the inductances. That we gave a funny name in a previous video. We call those the gammas of the inductors. Use the gamma of the inductors and you obtain the gammas of the inductors X, Y, and Z. You can also use the formulas to convert a star of capacitors into a triangle of capacitors. The funny thing is you use the proper capacitance A, B and C to obtain the capacitance X, Y, and Z. Let's catch a little example to illustrate how useful these conversions from delta to Y or Y to delta are to put us back in the track of simplifications. Look at that circuit and we want to know what is the equivalent resistance seen by the source on the left. At first you say holy moly, I have only these two resistors in series, right? But all of the other resistors are neither in series nor in parallel. How can I simplify them? Well, look at that. There are two triangles, one right side up, another upside down. I choose one of them, replace that by a star, and I am in business again, as I'll show you in a moment. I'm going to choose the triangle on the top just because this one. I'll replace that by an equivalent star, this one, 
And look, now I'm in business because now I can simplify C and D in series, B and E in series, and I end with this circuit. K and P are now in parallel, and that is in series with the other three resistors. See how easy it is? And all it took was to convert this triangle into this star to put us back on the track of simplifications. Sometimes it's the other way around. You have a star, and you realize that if you convert that into a triangle, you can start simplifications and move on. Now some homework. If the three resistors in a triangle have the very same value, each one of them, R, what is the value of the resistors in the equivalent star? This situation happens very often in the second part of the course, in the AC analysis of circuits, in circuits of the electric power industry. So, you can go from a delta to a y and y to a delta. But um, how come those formulas work? This part on is for those of you, my viewers, who are truly hardcore. For the casual viewer, what you have seen already empowers you to transform deltas into y's and vice versa. But if you want to know why those formulas work, stay tuned. Let's justify the formulas. In what follows, the triangle and the star are not connected to anything. I will connect, however, an imaginary ohmmeter between any two of the external nodes, not to the central node of the star, and then compare the readings between what I read in the triangle and in the star, like this. If the triangle and the star are equivalent, the readings of that ohmmeter should be the same between the same two nodes, correct? Let's see. First, an ohmmeter between nodes A and B. Check it out. And that is a triangle with resistors RAB, RBC, and RCA. The triangle is not connected to anything for this demonstration, and I walk up to it with an ohmmeter and connect that between nodes A and B. What is the reading of the ohmmeter? You say, well, it's the equivalent resistance of that connection between nodes A and B, which is just RAB in parallel with the other branch in, in series, right? I put these two resistors in series and connect that in parallel to RAB. The formula is RAB in parallel with RBC plus RCA in series. Multiply them, divide by the sum, and that is the value of RAB. That's all right. Now, let's do the same experiment with an equivalent of Y. There is your Y. It is not connected to anything and I approach the same two nodes A and B with my imaginary ohmmeter, like so. And what is the resistance that I read? Well, first of all, there is no current through resistor RC, all right, because it's not connected to anything on the terminal C, so that resistor can be ignored. Zero amps. The resistance seen by the ohmmeter is RA in series with RB. If this tar is equivalent to the triangle in the previous slide, then the resistance reading by the ohmmeter between nodes A and B must be the same. What I read up here in the delta should be the same as the value that I read up here in the Y, so I can equate them both. Why are you doing that? Because now I have one equation, and I have two unknowns. What unknowns? R A and R B. I don't know what they are. I know who is R A B, B C C A. Those are given, but I don't know who is R A and R B. Oh, so you're going to have three unknowns, right? Yeah. So you need three equations. Yeah. And you have only one. Oh, yeah. So the only thing you have to do is to repeat the operation 
for an ohmmeter between nodes B and C in both connections, and that, that gives you another equation. Now repeat that uh, for an ohmmeter between nodes C and A in both Y and delta, and that gives you a third equation, right? Repeating for purse B, C, and C, A, you have one equation we already seen, and the other for B and C, and the other for C and A. If you remember your math from high school, you realize, hey, that is a system of three equations with three unknowns, R, A, R, B, and R, C. The solution is simple, even if laborious. I promise you, when you solve that, this is what you get for R, A, this is what you get for RB and for RC. And no surprise, the value of the resistor RA is the product of RAB with RCA divided by the sum of the three resistors. And check it out, RAB and RCA are adjacent to the resistor that will be connected to node A. So that is how we demonstrate the three formulas to go from A triangle to a star. If you use conductances instead and use the same procedure, you can demonstrate the formulas to go from a star to a delta. Multiply the adjacents, divide by the sum. That is fun. Let's do that again. Multiply the adjacents, divide by the sum. My dear invisible friends, this is all for tonight and I hope that you have enjoyed this very short video as much as I have enjoyed putting it together. I invite you to join me for our next movie. Thank you very much and have a wonderful evening.